Ever thought that brain might work like a radio receiver? This is an idea from David Ball, theoretical physicist that we are going to explore today. Imagine a caveman uh, that traveled to the future and walking in the jungle. He suddenly finds a device that he wonders what it is. He is trying to play around with the buttons and all of a sudden he explores beneficios de estudiar nuestros programas académicos de licenciaturas con inscripciones abiertas para iniciar clases en agosto is wondering why this device is generating that sound the very first thought would be the device itself is generating the sound he has no idea this was a radio receiver that would receive the electromagnetic waves through the antenna and would denoise it and produce the sound comprehensible for a human. So the idea of brain as radio comes from this guy, David Bohm, who was a theoretical physicist and student of Oppenheimer, the father of nuclear bomb. He has many books and theories about quantum mechanics, brain as hologram, hollow movement, pilot wave theory, and so forth. In this video, we are going to explore his idea of implicate explicate order and how it relates to the function of brain as a radio receiver. Fragmentation and wholeness. Bohm discusses the pervasive problem of fragmentation in human thought, society, and the physical world, arguing that it leads to a range of crisis. Fragmentation, the vision of science to many disciplines such as chemistry, physics, and biology, neuroscience, these are having their own benefit of focusing on particular questions and becoming deep to answer those questions. But it has its own problem. Imagine this canvas of pixels. These are all white. Let's say it's empty canvas of pixels. You see the gray and uh, blackish colors because I want you to see that is pixelated. But imagine it's just the pixelated of plain color canvas. When I think about the wholeness idea of bone, I imagine this canvas being the whole universe. Anything is possible within this canvas. Everything can be there. It depends on you how or with what colors with what orders you color each pixel. You can color pixels in a way that the shape of a brain appears. You can color pixels in a way that the shape of a flower appears. Anything is possible. All, everything is overlaid. Everything is possible. So I have put this overlay of pictures. There are three pictures here. There's a picture of jungle and this person in the brain. Bohm's wholeness proposes that brain itself is part of the whole. He also brings up a question, uh, how could, in a whole, how could part of it becomes aware of other parts? One part of whole becoming aware of another part. So let's say this is the bold area, the brain, that is part of this whole picture, because everything is there, depending on how this brain colors this canvas, it can see particular picture. So this is kind of analogy to Bohm's idea of depending on how brain tunes to what frequencies it can experience a certain, it can unfold a certain reality. Now in another picture, the same brain can unfold a different reality. Although these two pictures were overlaid, were present, together with brain itself in the same canvas, depending on how this brain colors this canvas or in another term, tunes to certain frequency, it can experience different things. 
Now let's go back to his idea of implicate and explicate order. Central to his philosophy is the distinction between implicate or unfolded and explicate or unfolded order. The implicate order is the deeper dimension of reality from which the explicate order emerges. This framework is used to explain the interconnectedness and the continuous unfolding and unfolding of all matter and consciousness. An interesting analogy that Bohm uses is the ink droplet. Let's say we have a cylinder that is filled with a viscous fluid, such as glycerin, and we drop an ink to that fluid uh, the reason it's viscous be because we don't want that droplet to get diffused immediately. We want to be able to control its movement. So we put a droplet of ink and try to rotate. So it has an inner cylinder that we tr when we try to rotate it, the droplet spreads in the glycerin like a thread. It spreads all throughout the glycerin. Bohm mentions that this is the concept of implicate order, the concept of merging to the whole, everything together as a whole. And then he mentions if you rotate the cylinder backward, it becomes unfolded and it clicks to become the same droplet as it was before. That's what he mentions as an explicate order. So our decision now rotating the cylinder backward brings the droplet to its initial state and separates it from the hole, denoises it, and so it becomes a full droplet. So that's the concept of implicate and explicate order in Bohm's philosophy also uses quantum theory to support implicate order. According to him, quantum theory introduces features that supports the implicate order, such as quantum entanglement, wave-particle duality, the non-local correlations that challenge mechanistic and classical ideas of separable independent entities interacting in a deterministic universe. Quantum theory suggests a world where entities such as electrons can exhibit different properties based on their observational context and where elements show non-local relationships, defying classical causality and separateness. Bohm also uses relativity in the concept of space-time to support his idea of implicate and explicate order. In the theory of relativity Bohm discusses have Einstein's insights led to the understanding that space-time are not absolute but relative and deeply intertwined in a space-time continuum. This challenged the classical Newtonian view of an immutable stage upon which events unfold independently. The relativistic framework suggests that the structure of a space-time itself is affected by the distribution of mass energy that leads to a universe where very geometry of a space can warp and curve. This insight into the interconnectedness of matter, energy, and the geometry of, a, of the universe hints at the undivided wholeness of the phenomena. The brain as a radio, tuning into the implicate order. According to Bohm, brain works like a radio. It deciphers signals from the noise of the implicate order to manifest coherent perceptions and thoughts in the explicate order. Mm -hmm. By drawing parallels between the process of radio signal reception and the brain's interpretation of quantum information, we can explore the idea that consciousness is deeply connected to the fabric of the universe. Bohm also uses this interesting metaphor. He mentions just like a computer uh, becomes unresponsive due to a virus affecting its keyboard, similarly our daily routine render our brain unresponsive to the signals from the universe. When I think about this, I can connect with this idea when we dream. Our brain at the time of the dreaming is free from all the sensory stimuli. So 
all of the capacity goes to process um, daily situations, crises, our agonies and concerns. And, and it can bring very interesting insights to the plate at the time of dream, while when we are awake, our daily life takes up the processing power. And so sometimes it becomes unresponsive to interesting insights that it could get, it could receive. Is brain a radio? Is it a hologram? Is it a computer? I would love to hear your ideas and opinions. Thank you for watching.